Hi guys, Svetlana Sotek here and today we'll be making these super, super adorable trinket pouches. Now these pouches with the pleats on each side might seem a little bit intimidating at first, but I think you will be pleasantly surprised at how quickly and effortlessly they come together and you will love their beautiful professional finish. This pouch finishes at three and a half inches wide by six inches tall. It features the two ribbon tabs on each side of the zipper for an easy opening and closing. And it features these super lovely side pleats that make for a really nice and unique uh, zipper pouch. Now, this size is perfect to keep uh, some of my small notions or even some of my sewing clips in or it would be great for makeup or maybe some crayons or markers. And as you can see, this is the inside of the pouch and the pouch looks as beautiful on the inside as it does on the outside. Let's start, shall we? To make this pouch, you will need two exterior panels two lining panels. Now I'm using quilting cotton for both my exterior and the lining of the pouch. You will also need two panels of medium weight fusible interfacing. I am using Pellen SF101. All these panels will measure five inches wide by seven inches tall. You will need two strips of quilting cotton measuring one and a half inches tall by four and a quarter inches long. These will be the bindings for the raw edges of your lining. You will need an eight inch or longer nylon zipper, two two inch long ribbons for your tabs, and an optional zipper pull. I am using a deer skin leather lace. You will also need a ruler, a fabric marking pen, sharp scissors, and sewing clips or pins. You will also need all the standard sewing and pressing supplies. Let's start by fusing interfacing to the wrong side of our exterior panels. So place your panel right side down on your ironing board. Bring the interfacing, place it on top, the sticky or bumpy side down like so, and then use your hot iron on cotton setting and steam to adhere that in place by placing the iron up and down. Now use a ruler and your fabric marking pen to mark a seven inch length along your zipper right here. As you can see, my zipper is a little bit longer than eight inches, which will work okay. That's just what I had on hand. So if it's a little bit longer, that's fine. Just make sure it's not shorter than eight inches. So I marked my seven inches right here. Those will be my points that I know where my panels need to go. And I have my exterior panels right here. I am using um, directional fabric, so I want my top of the fabric to be right here. And these will be my panels, and my zipper will go right here in the middle. So what I'm going to do, I will work on one panel at a time, and I will flip it right side down along these two marks. Here are my seven inch marks along the zipper. Here we go, like that. I'll just attach this. Oops, I wanna make sure it's correct. So I'll adjust it a little bit. Here we go. So it's directly on these marks. Now I'll flip the panel right side up and I'm going to add my interfacing. Again, remember the top of your zipper and the top of your panel are here. So if you're using directional print for your lining, make sure it's all the way up here and place it right sides together with your exterior panel and your zipper will be sandwiched in between. And now adjust your clips. 
to catch the lining in place as well. And we are going to take this panel to the sewing machine and stitch along the, this edge right here using slightly less than quarter inch seam allowance back stitching at the beginning and end. And you can definitely use a zipper foot for this step if you like. Like, as you can see, my regular presser foot on my sewing machine is pretty skinny, so I'm perfectly fine using that instead of my zipper foot. Now, take this panel to your pressing board. And use your hot iron and steam to press both the exterior panel and the lining away from the zipper. So I like to first finger press the seam just to make sure everything lies nice and flat. And then I'll use my hot iron with some steam. And now is a good time to just do a little quick check just to make sure everything lies down. Um, correctly and is in the place where it needs to be. So remember that the top of your zipper is where the top of your fabric is. That's very important if you're using directional print. And also both your lining and your exterior panels are lined up exactly here on the edges. So you have the same amount of fabric on the exterior as well as on the lining, like that. And we are going to take the panel to the sewing machine and stitch along this edge using 1 8 inch seam allowance. And you will be stitching through both the exterior panel and the lining and the zipper will be sandwiched in between the panels. Okay, the first exterior panel and the lining are attached to our zipper. And now it's time to do the same for our remaining exterior panel and the lining. So as you can see, I already lined it up because I want my fabric to be connected where it was connected. The top of my fabric is right here where the zipper pull is. And I'm just going to flip the panel right side down like so and line it up was the edge of this uh, zipper tape right here. I'll flip it zipper side up like so. Now I can use my clips to hold it in place while I attach the uh, lining as well. So I'll just use two clips right here to hold it in place. As you can see, everything is neatly lined up and I'm going to add my interfacing. Again, I'll flip it right side down like so line up the side edges and the top raw edge like this Chain, move my um, sewing clips add one more and again i have my exterior panel right here my lining is on the other side and my zipper is sandwiched in between and the same way as i did for my uh, first panels i'm going to take it to my sewing machine stitch along this edge using slightly less than quarter inch seam allowance. Again, you can use your zipper foot for this step. I will be using just my standard presser, uh, presser foot. Once you stitch it, open up the panels, press them away from the zipper and top stitch just the same way as we did with the first panels. Okay, so this is what my pouch looks like at this point. I have both exterior panels and lining panels attached to the zipper. And now it's time to add my uh, ribbon tabs. So I'm going to fold my ribbon in half like so and bring it first to the bottom edge of the zipper and line the raw edges of my ribbon with the raw edge 
of the panels like this. Line it up on top of the zipper. And I'm going to stitch right here, attaching the tab in place using 1 8 inch seam allowance. And I will stitch back and forth a few times to secure it in place. All right, this is now attached. And as you can see, this is an nylon zipper. So my machine had no issues sewing through it. There's no problem with that. And I'm just going to take my scissors and cut off the remaining zipper right here. So maybe you shouldn't use your wonderful fabric shears for this step because you are cutting uh, through nylon zippers. Now it's time to add the ribbon tab on the top side of the pouch. But here is one very important step. You need to open your zipper like so. Fold the ribbon in half like that. And then again, here, it's better if we bring it here this way, fold the ribbon in half and bring it right here, line it up with this edge. Now you have to be a little bit more careful here because this zipper is open right here, but that shouldn't be an issue. Just hold both sides like that with your fingers. The ribbon tab is now attached. And again, I'm going to cut off this remaining part of the zipper, like so. See, so now I have my two tabs and my zipper is nicely in here within the area of the pouch. So always, always remember to move your zipper pull because if it stayed out here and you'd cut it off, you'd have no opening here. And that just wouldn't be good, of course. All right, so now we need to bring our exterior panels together and our lining panels together like so. So line, line up the raw edges and use clips or pins to hold the panels in place because we wanna make sure nothing moves when we do our stitching. So I'll attach my exterior panels and my linings as well. And now I'm going to stitch along both these edges using quarter inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and end. Right now, let's take the panel to our pressing board and press the seams open. I like to use this sleeve pressing board to press my seams open, but if you don't have that, a regular pressing board will work just fine. So I just place my pouch right here and press the seams open. Like so. Now, if you don't have a skinny pressing board like that, you would just open the seam like this. First one side and then the other side. And it works great as well. So this is what your pouch will look like at this point. We'll have almost like two tubes next to each other connected with a zipper. So make sure you reach inside the exterior of your pouch and open the zipper almost all the way or three quarters of the way. Now place your hand inside the lining, grab onto the exterior panel and pull everything out. You do it gently, you don't wanna tug on all these panels too much or rip any of the stitches and just smooth everything out. Place your hand inside and smooth it all out, like so. As you can see now, we are making this nice flat pouch right here. And line up the middle of your zipper with the bottom seam right here, like so. Place it here. Use a clip 
or pin to hold it in place and do the same on this side of the pouch. So again, my seams are on top of each other. They stay nice and flat and I'm going to line up the middle of the zipper right here with the seam and clip it in place and smooth out your pouch like that. Now I like to even just double check, measure that everything is correct, that I have the same amount of fabric on both sides of the pouch and everything looks good. Everything looks great. And now I'm going to flip my pouch zipper side down, bring my marking pen here and mark make marks right here along these side edges at three quarter of an inch right here. Three quarter of an inch here and three quarter of an inch on this side and do the same on this side. Three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch like that. And now flip it zipper side up again and fold your panel. You're folding both exterior and the lining at the same time at the marks right here. So you see where my marks are right here. And I'm going to use clips to hold these folds in place like so and do the fold on the other side as well. Here we go. Again, I'm using my marks right here my marks from the previous step and I am folding it here. So the folds are three quarters of an inch. I'll hold it all in place. So this is what your pouch should look like at this point. We have these two folds on the zipper side, on the back side. It's just nice and flat. Here we go. And what we are going to do now is take it to the sewing machine and stitch along this raw edge using 1 8 inch seam allowance back stitching at the beginning and end. I will also back stitch here where there's this fold just to make sure everything stays nice and flat and do the same on the other side of the pouch. All right, all that's left to do now is add the binding to finish our raw edges and we'll be all done. So bring your binding strip right side up, right here to your sewing machine and center your panel down along the raw edge right here. So make sure the binding is on the flat side of the pouch. Your flaps fold, you can see them up here and you have the same amount of fabric exposed on both sides. And now bring it to your sewing machine and stitch uh, along this edge using quarter inch seam allowance back stitching at the beginning and end. And now it's time to wrap the binding around the edges. So bring the binding up like so, wrap this edge around the corner here keep it nice and flat and fold the top of the binding down towards the raw edge and fold it over one more time covering the edge of the uh, pouch in the binding like so see this is what it looks like and let's do the same on the other side so again wrap it around it like so Hold it nice and neat, bring it down to the raw edge and fold it over one more time. And I'm going to use a clip here and just smooth out this middle part to make sure that everything is as neat as possible. I'm going to clip off any stray threads right here because I want it to look nice and neat. So now we are going to stitch along this edge of the binding, back stitching at the beginning and end and using 1 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm going to hold on to the tail of my thread so I don't get any knots on the bottom of my stitching. Okay, 
okay see so here is the binding on one side on the other side no more raw edges anywhere and we are going to do the same process for the second binding so again place the pouch on top of the binding line up the edges stitch along the seam back stitching at the beginning and end and then we'll wrap the binding around it and again let me show you one more time how to wrap it around it so we push the binding up like so fold the binding around this raw edge keep it nice and neat here fold it down towards the raw edge like so and fold it down again and use a clip to hold it in place and do the same again wrap it around the edge keep it nice and neat bring it down to the raw edge of the pouch and fold it over one more time clip it neaten up the middle part of the binding and clip that in place and again we're going to stitch along the edge back stitching at the beginning and end Okay, this is what our pouch looks like at this point so the back side is nice and flat bindings are attached neatly to the back and the front no raw edges zipper is in the middle and the pouch is lining side out so what we need to do is turn the pouch right side out so i'm going to open my zipper all the way here we go and just gently turn the pouch right side out Take your time with this step. Just smooth all the edges, push all the corners out because you want it to look as neat as possible. Here's my pouch right now and I'm going to give it a good press along these side pleats to make sure they stay nice and flat when folded. And then we'll just add a zipper pull to the zipper. Now it's an optional thing. I'm going to add it to mine and then the pouch will be all finished. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and will have lots of fun making your own trinket pouches. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Bye!